Hello everyone, I'm Andrew Keller here from GoPro Wrestling in the studio and I'm with none other than the legendary Hall of Famer, the one and only WWE legend, Cowboy Bob Orton, the ace. Thank you for joining us here, I really appreciate your time. My pleasure, glad to be here. You know, a lot of times I meet wrestlers here, the, the legends, old timers here in the studio. One of the common denominator of the, the question that I'll, I'll ask about the current WWE product is they'll say, well, I don't really watch the product. But you have a future Hall of Famer legend himself in his own right, Randy Orton, wrestling for WWE and has been on top for all these years. What do you think about how he's doing in, in WWE and the direction WWE is taking? I think that uh, Randy is uh, the best they've got. And I think he has been for a while. Uh, he loves his job. Uh, performing is uh, what he lives for. And... Uh, now, are you saying he's the best? Is he? Are you saying he's the best because he's uh, like you? You're talking about him as a son, or are you talking about as a performer? Both. Have you critiqued him when he joined WWE at all? Uh, when he first started, I I critiqued him a little. You know, talked to him about what he was doing, what to do, when to do it. Uh, that's the most important thing. It's not what you do; it's when you do it. And uh, uh, once he learned. That aspect, I really didn't have a whole lot more to say because because he can do anything, right? And uh, uh, his head's where it's supposed to be, and and uh, like I say, there's nobody better right now than, than Randy. And I think he would have been good in any uh, in any era. I think well, he played. Been one he of played the top guys. And yeah. He played other sports as well, right? No, he just wrestled. Wrestled through school. Played a little basketball. Okay. And you have another son. We'll touch on him later, but he yeah. he actually does stand up comedy. A lot of people don't know that. He's we talked about that. He moved to uh, uh, New York City the end of uh, September. He's already got his apartment. Actually, wow! So he's gonna okay. he's gonna give it a shot. Yeah, well, let's uh, wish him the best. I mean, yeah, yeah. same as jeans, right? Yeah. <laughs> Girl, he grew, you you know, Randy grew up with his dad. With you uh, growing up with giving the advice, giving the influence. Uh, your father. Legendary Bob Morton Sr. Wow. What's the what was that like growing up in the business starting out and having your dad help you? And what were some of the things that your dad taught you? Well, you know, dad was kind of like I was. He just uh, uh, He took me down. He He watched me the other guys uh, uh, Matt Suda was the one who actually got in the ring with me and, and trained me and everything at the same time Bob Roop was down there and uh, uh, Jack Briscoe uh, spent a lot of time with me which which was really great, but my dad would just sit back and watch. Now you, met, you mentioned Hiro Matsuda. Is it true? This is just a rumor. I don't know if this is true, but is it true that you're the one that introduced Hulk Hogan to Matsuda? Uh, yeah, I was at a bar in uh, Tampa, Florida. It had to be uh, 75, maybe 76. And uh, I got ready to go home. The band went on break. I was getting ready to go home. At the time, I was a Florida champion. I weighed about, oh, 220, maybe 225. And as I was leaving the bar, somebody behind me said, Hey, Mr. Orton, hey, Mr. Orton. I turned around and looked, and it was this big son of a gun. And I'm thinking, oh, boy, because I was a heel. And, and uh, at that time, you kind of had to watch yourself with people, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to get caught. Uh, with your pants down, so to speak, and and I saw him, and I said, "Oh boy, here we go." But he was very polite and, and asked me uh, uh, how to get started because he wanted to be a professional wrestler. And I sent him down to uh, uh, Hiro Matsuda, who, from what I understand, the first time out broke his leg, yeah. but it didn't stop him. He, he came back and. And uh, he ended up being probably one of the biggest names in the business. Now, did you have to go through similar hardships? I mean, it's a different time when, when your son Randy came up, maybe early 2000s, it was a different time. But I mean, in the 70s and 80s when you came in, it was heavily protected with kayfabe and protecting yeah. the business. So did you ever have something similar where they would test you in the ring, they would injure you? Like, what, what were some of the similarities or differences, if any? No, because I wrestled... Uh, all through school and and, and uh, was pretty good and and then of course you know dad was ahead of me yeah. 
so people had respect for dad. And naturally, nobody tried me or anything back then. It might have been a couple of guys who were actually, you know, pretty much dicks anyway. And uh, it, it didn't last long. No. Who were, who were uh, some of the guys I that... I mean, the match didn't last long. <laughs> Plus, Touché. they didn't mess with me anymore either. <laughs> who, were, who did you train with? Uh, how did you break in? I trained with uh, a hero match shooter, okay, right. Jack Briscoe. Uh, it's a sportatorium in, in uh, uh, Tampa, Florida. Do you remember what, how much you got paid in your first match? I think it was forty dollars. Might have been twenty-five, but I think it was forty. Wow! My first match was with uh, George McCreary. What was that like? We just went out and shot. George was a real good amateur too, so we just went out. And nobody, nobody really smarted wrestling. you guys up. You, you guys really. Oh, no, no, and we, you have wrestling background. We were so. smart. We oh, were you just, okay. We were just scared to death and nervous and. We just decided, you know, let's just go for it. <laughs> you worked early in, in Alabama. What was that? What was that like? But, but uh, my next match was me and my dad against uh, Hiramath Suda, and uh, I'm pretty sure it was Mike Graham. Wow. And uh, working with George the night before thinking, oh, my God, <laughs> and then working with Hero and Mike Graham. You know, I, you know, Mike had been working for a while. The next night was like, <laughs> almighty, you mean, oh, it, it could be like this? Yeah. You know, I, I'm looking at, at the very worst and the very best, you know, in, in two days. So, you know, it was pretty cool. You not know, not a lot of people could say I, I tag teamed with my father a second match in. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever get a chance West to? Did you ever get a chance? I know you you've done some run-ins and did some work with Randy when he's part of WWE. Did you ever actually have a, a match like a tag match like you and Randy partnering up? I'm pretty sure we did. Uh, we were tag team against the Undertaker. Uh, he didn't need a partner, but, right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was a lot of fun. Gee, man, Italy. Oh my goodness! You know, to get back in the ring after all those years. Not being in the ring. And being able to get back in the ring with The Undertaker and Randy, who were over so strong that it was really uh, not like sex, but, but you know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just great people going crazy. and A lot of people and, know you worked uh, in the early uh, territories, you know, in. Um, down south, or, but you didn't get your big break till you got to New York, WWE. Well, you know, uh, uh, the territory, when there were territories, I was, uh, I was on top in Florida in the 70s, mid-70s. I was Florida champion and everything. All right, I meant the national, and, when, when they got uh, to the national expansion. Well, the right. national right. thing, you know, when, right. when Vince uh, finally went nationwide, What an experience that was! You know, we went everywhere, and but that's and around just, this. You know, people were just, just uh, filing in the arenas. It, it was just fantastic. You know, when he went, it, it just. When you came in, that's when Vince up. started. You know, quote unquote, leaving raiding the territories. He would take all the best talent. That's how you came in. That's how yeah. Piper, Mean Gene, the guys from AWA. Yeah. Um, what year was did you get the call um, to go to WWE, and how did that come about? Well, I started with uh, Vince's dad in the WWF. I, I was there maybe six, seven months. And then I, I think I went from there to uh, Charlotte, maybe. I took some time off, then I went to Charlotte. And it was the same old NWA stuff where there's clicks and, and this yeah. and that and the other. And it's, it's, you know, working wasn't fun because you had all the clicks and all that stuff. And, but then when Vince... Uh, went nationwide, you know, I got to come in, and you just realize, you know, it's like night and day, you know, just, just, uh, uh, a professionalism, the way things were ran, uh, right. uh, the, uh, the camaraderie, you know, in the dressing rooms and stuff was, 
when there's something you didn't really see in the other territories yeah. because everybody was, you know, worried about this and worried about that. Everybody's worried about their yeah. spots. Was it, yeah. was a lot of people protective over their spots at that time? Well, a lot of people were, you know, fortunately I never got into any of that stuff. I never cared. I always figured if I went out and I worked hard, did the best I could do, I didn't have to worry about that stuff. And so I didn't, you know, I never... How did you meet uh, Roddy Piper? Did, did you meet Roddy before you went to WWF? Yeah, yeah I met Roddy in uh, uh, Charlotte. We were roommates. You know, we lived together for a while down there. And then, then when I come into New York, I didn't really know that I was going to be hooked up with Roddy. But, but uh, that's what they did, and it was just great. I had a blast. I think Roddy did, too. And, and uh, there was asses in seats, boy. We... Yeah, you guys were part of the main event we, of the first WrestleMania. We'll, we'll touch on that. But about every arena we ever went to. It was just packed. It was just great. You had some really great matches that really flew under the radar that a lot of people don't talk about. or I've seen that you weren't asked a lot in other interviews. But, man, you had some great matches with Tito Santana that a lot of people don't know about. What was that like working with uh, Tito Santana? Oh, Tito, what a professional. He was just, just fantastic. He could do anything. Didn't, uh, didn't matter what. You know, Tito could do it. And you guys were feuding over the Intercontinental title. Like yeah. Tito was red hot at the time. I mean, you were red hot at the time. Yeah. Was there ever talk about you taking the Intercontinental title? They never talked to me about it. Okay. <laughs> but man, you guys wrestled all around. And, yeah, um, yeah, we went everywhere. Probably three or four times everywhere, yeah. which, you know, was great. Made a lot of money working with Tito. God bless him. Thanks. <laughs> right around like 84, 85, that's when they had the war to settle the score. That's when the first WrestleMania was taking place. When did you start hearing WrestleMania was going to be a thing, the very first WrestleMania? Was there rumblings in the locker room like, oh, Vince is out of his mind. What's he doing? He's bringing in celebrities. Well, what was your take on all that? Well, we knew that, that it better do good or because uh, I think Vince... Uh, Sunk about everything he had in the rest Yeah, he and Linda put everything, yeah. You're right. And, uh, but it, it did so good that from then on he never looked back. Just, boom, you know, things just exploded, you know, all the way across the country. Just it, exploded. We were talking it's about fast. Roddy pre before and on, on air now, but, like, in Roddy's book, Roddy <laughs> says that, he, yourself, and Orndorf were left outside while the limo picked up uh, Hulk Hogan, Mr. T. Right after you guys were the reason that, like, had this red-hot main event with them. You were the heels, you know, and they treated them with, like, first class. And you guys were just left in the middle of, like, I, I forgot, 34th Street. Is that true? Like, what, what happened there? Boy, you know what? I kind of vaguely remember, remember that, but uh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> they just left you guys there. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you got Hogan and and uh, Mr. T. What did you think about Mr. T being incorporated into the main Jimmy. event, especially at a time when you guys were really protective over the business and to have a guy that's from Hollywood who's on the A-team and he's doing great things in Hollywood, but yeah. to come into the wrestling world and you guys are trying to protect him, what, what, how did you feel about him being involved? You know what? He was a nice guy as you'd ever want to meet. And... Uh, I had no problem with it at all. Shoot, it, it did pretty well. Yeah, I, I would think. I wanted so, to get your take on it because I know how Roddy yeah, felt about it. God bless yeah, I mean, Roddy well, was. Hey, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> jumping a year ahead. Roddy jumping at something we had in New York City. They were. And I had oh to yeah. Pull, I had to pull him off. I said, Rod, but he was pissed. But you know, it's just. During the Roddy, promo, Roddy yeah. was real, real high strung. Yeah. Jumping a year ahead when um, they were putting WrestleMania 2 with, with the boxing match between Piper and Mr. T. Yeah. They had a match beforehand on Saturday Night's main event with Me you boxing yeah. Mr. T. Now, there's a story that coming back from the locker room, um, you're just coming in with a towel draped around your neck and a, and a cigar. And you're just like, yeah. you don't even break a sweat. And a beer. And a beer in your hand. And Mr. T is flopping like a fish, as Piper and some others would say. Is that, now, is that what happened? Oh, he was just, you know, taking a few deep breaths. <laughs> You're being but, modest. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know what, I enjoyed, you know, the guy. he was a nice guy. As Did Mr. T take concerned. direction from you and some of the other veterans about how to work, or was he oh, difficult? No, 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 no. He, was, he, was, he was very easy. You know, with me, but then at the same time, you know, why wouldn't he be? Yeah. You know, he's out of his element. 
and he's in there with one of the baddest dudes in the world. Yeah. So you would think that uh, that he would be you know pretty mean. We're in nice guy, uh, very respectful. Uh, going back to WrestleMania one, when did you know that that was going to be the main event, and did you think that it would take off? I mean, you we just touched on it that yeah. Vince was gambling with his future basically with that, but while the event was going on or did you feel like man i'm part of something special here this is really something different oh yeah 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 we all knew it was something special and we all knew that we that it better do good too you know yeah. and, and uh, uh and it did what was um was that the first time you met muhammad ali i mean he was the special re uh, referee enforcer of the no, match no i met him in uh but he was a wrestling fan. In, in Florida, he was a special referee in one of my matches. Me and it was either me and Mike Graham or me and Steve Kern, where where Muhammad Ali was was a special referee or judge or something. But yeah. but I had met him then. Why? Matter of fact, I think he knocked me out. Oh, okay. That's not an easy thing to do. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, he did. As a matter of fact, he knocked me out, and then. When we was in the garden, he come up like he was going to hit me again, and I jumped off the because I'd already been hit by him once. Right, right. I said, no, 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 <laughs> once is enough. <laughs> Why wasn't that match at WrestleMania 1 a six-man tag? I mean, you had yourselves and Jimmy Snooker there. You were in the respective corners of Orndorff and Piper versus Mr. Teen Hogan. Why wasn't a six-man tag? Well, I think uh, uh, it, it, it might have been a little too much. Especially with uh, T in there, or even you and uh, Snook on the undercard. I mean, you guys are no stranger to others. You've had some great matches with each other. Yeah. I'm surprised that they didn't put you guys together. I mean, they had other matches on the cards: SD Jones and King Kong Bundy in nine seconds. Ah, you know, so, I mean, it, it was fine with me. You know, I got a good payday. Yeah. I don't have to work. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um. This one is from the Saturday's main event. We touched on that, but you were introduced at, in that boxing uh, Bob and Bat, like in uh, the Saturday's main event five with Mr. T. Yeah. You were introduced as the ace in comedy and funny man by ring announcer Joel Rivers, who misread the card. Do you remember that? No, not at all. Joel uh, Rivers. Jo jo Joan Rivers. I apologize. Joan Rivers. Yeah. I didn't even. I don't even remember ever meeting her. Yeah, that was just something so I, I wanted to clear up, but. She now, maybe it was uh, uh, something where we did her thing and then she did the talking after. No, I don't know. Oh, okay, I, I, okay. I have no idea. What was Andre the Giant like? I kind of remember her, though, on TV. Joan, wasn't she on the news or something? Yes, she was. Like yeah, She actually yeah. was on WWE like as a future timekeeper, I believe, a ring announcer. Joan Rivers? So, Joan Rivers. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Yeah, it's, it's okay. <laughs> Celebrities in wrestling. Moving on, um, what was Andre the Giant like? Oh, he was just a great man, nicest guy you'd ever want to meet, and one of the only guys who could drink more beer than I could. What is your beer of choice? Uh, Heineken. Heineken. Okay. Heineken. Still drink Heineken. Always have. How many uh, beers have you witnessed? I mean, the legend has it he's drank almost close to 200 beers in one sitting. Well, I know the times that we drink together. I always tried to keep up, and I could last, you know, I could keep up with him for maybe, maybe 30 minutes. And then it was just, just too much. I don't know how much he drank, but he drank a lot of beers. What did the can look like in his hand? Can you actually... And I used to drink a case of beer, you know, back in my heyday. I could drink a case of beer without, uh, without even, you know, it didn't even bother me. And he probably drank three beers from my one. Gotcha. What was the question he was asking? No, what, 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 did you even could see the beer in his hand? I mean, a lot of people said his hands oh, were no, so no, big no. that you couldn't even see that he had a if beverage. If he was drinking a can of beer, you wouldn't know he had it unless you knew he was drinking. Wow. He could sit there with his hand like that, and you couldn't see the, the beer <laughs> can. Yeah, that's, that's true. Is it true, like, he he went out with... Um, with your with your sister? He dated my sister, he did for, your sister? for uh, years, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, what did you feel about, the, like, well, you, you guys got along anyhow, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we worked in Madison Square Garden, and he, uh, 
Math is going good and everything, and he goes, slam me. I just laughed. <laughs> Touching back, um, I'd like to bring up some names like from WWE at the time. I mean, there were so many heavy hitters, personalities at the time. And it was the greatest bunch of guys at one place at one time. I, 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 that'll never happen again. Uh, it never happened before. You know, it was just amazing. How Everybody would you feel? How would is there anybody uh, besides your besides Randy in WWE today that you feel could be a part of the locker room in the '80s and get over? Oh, that's a hard question that I probably wouldn't want to touch with a ten foot pole. Do you think Randy? Do you think Randy could have? Yeah, 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 yeah. He forties, fifties, sixties, a it uh, wouldn't matter. He would have been good because he has it in his genes. Good, no matter you know when. But you know, there's a handful of guys up there that are pretty gosh darn good. So, so yeah. Was there? We touched on it earlier. Is there anything that? I mean, now he's a veteran and he's more polished, but is it, early in his career, did Randy ever do anything that irked you or inside or out of the ring that said, hey, you know, we got to talk, father or son, let's uh, go? You know, a little bit outside the ring. I think, you know, he, he had a very young age, he started making a whole lot of money. And he, he went a little wild there for a short period of time, but, you know. Yeah. He did have to be talked to by me and a couple other people too. So, but uh, didn't take him long to straighten up. And, and uh, but I understood. You know, you're 24, 25 years old. And, he was one of the youngest champions yeah. at that. I think in 2004, he was the youngest champion at age 24. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody's. I don't think anybody has surpassed that sense of. You know, I have no idea. If Frank, you could check. I think. Brock Lesnar was, I think it was 25 or 26, but we haven't had the youngest one that was younger than 24, I believe, that won the world title at that age. To have that kind of, you know. He is, uh, uh, what a career, and, and he's still going, strong. Is there a bad match he's ever had that sticks out to you? I mean, is there something that you ever said, you know, Randy, I didn't like that match, and here's what. Like, is there anything? I mean, he's had a lot of great matches, more, yeah. a lot more than if he had any bad matches. I you mean, know, I can't really remember, can't. you know, anything specifically. There's been a time or two I've said, hey, you know, you should have done this instead of that, or, or maybe waited a little bit, but, but I wouldn't remember specifics. Yeah. You're his biggest critique, or if you don't... You used to be. Used to be. Yeah, yeah now there's nothing to critique. Wow. <laughs> that's a great endorsement. That's... Uh, yeah, it's, he's... He's, he's, uh, he's I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go way back. I mean, you mentioned the Briscoes. Um, what were some of the guys like? I don't, a lot of the old timers, like you know, like myself, like people like to. My, I have my pals like they always tell me, like you know, you're too old school. But Johnny Weaver. I mean, he was a big river. Johnny Valentine. I remember Weaver. I remember um, Valentine. Valentine was a river. I, who was Summer? Johnny Weaver. I didn't know him too well. I know he was in North Carolina. Don't even know if I was ever in the ring with him. Maybe once or twice. What were some of those guys that you traveled with? Is there any funny story you could share, especially uh, Johnny Valentine, who was a big ribber? Well, I spent time with Greg. Did he ever so, rib you? No. I don't think anybody has ribbed no, you. <laughs> no, no. They, uh, they picked their spots, a lot of them guys. You know, but, but there are certain guys they never did mess with. You know, luckily, I was one of them. Yeah. Did you ever see any nasty ribs pulled on anybody? And if so, can you... Share us. You no, know, I'm sure I did, but. You know, and I, I don't mean nasty. I, mean, I don't mean like. I'm getting old and I. Uh, I'm talking about like it. gear, people's gear. I heard stories like some guys' gears would get cut up, things that were. Yeah. Or, or Halliburton would get thrown in the river, things that were just yeah. plain yeah. mean. Um, yeah, I was just curious about that. Yeah, I, I just don't remember. You know, I, I remember some of the things you're talking about, but I, I don't even remember who or when or yeah. where. You ever witness any of the fights, like uh, famously the Dan Spivey and Adrian Adonis? Did you oh, ever? Oh, I was there. You were there? I was there. I saw. Uh, I saw. Uh, the problem with that is, is Adrian told the referee it, it screwed something up. He yelled at the referee. Danny, who's always a little, you know, great guy, but a little hothead. You know, thought that Adrian was talking to him and just blasted him. And, uh, you know, 
And when they get to the locker room, Spivey was fired ultimately until shit. he came back later. Shit happens. Uh, but we're back in the locker room, and, and Adrian says, I'm going over. I said, why? <laughs> he goes, come on, I'm going. I said, I said, Adrian, I'm not going to go over there and get in a bunch of trouble with the guy. You guys had your problem. It's over. You know, forget about it. But he went back over there and uh, come back, and I guess Daniel nailed him again. He was just, oh, what a split. I've never seen an eye split like that. But it screwed my night up. I had to take him to the hospital and get him scared. Because he was riding with me. I had to take him to the hospital and get him sewed up and everything and take care of him. And jeez. I really liked Adrian. But, you know, I like Danny, too. But, uh, My partner, Dick Murdoch, he traveled with him a lot as well, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dick was just a blast. Just a lot of fun to be around. Just a good old Texas boy. Mm -hmm. who, were, who, who did you travel with mostly? Was it Roddy during that time period? Well... I traveled with Roddy when I was up here, very in uh, Don Morocco. I uh, rode with us a lot, and so did Adrian. But you know, and then when I was in Carolina, I, I probably traveled a lot with Roddy, some with Valentine. Florida, I traveled with Bob Rupert, I drove by myself. But usually I just went by myself unless it was one of my friends there. I didn't like just being in a car with, with guys I didn't really know yeah. or. Or whatever, you know, just... A lot of wrestlers have said good things about you, and it's, and particularly Paul Orndorff, in the fact that you guys weren't, like, crazy on the road too much. You weren't... Uh, you just kept to yourselves. You didn't get into trouble. H how hard was that to... to. You try, <laughs> how hard was it to stay out of trouble when you see all these things happening? Like, you know, I'm not mentioning names, but, like, wrestlers tearing up hotel rooms and things that were happening. Yeah. I mean... I mean, even Orndorff told me the same. Like, the other guys would get kicked out of hotels because other guys would tear it up or yeah, things would happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how did you stay away from that? Like, and keep... Was it difficult or... No, no, no. I just never saw any... I never saw any upside to tearing up a hotel room. I, I just... You know, that's where I was going to go sleep and watch TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, tear it up? Like, um, I didn't know what happened. We were a little wild, but... But not to, not in that, you know, we never hurt anybody or, or tore anything up or anything like that. But sometimes we all, it was always within our little group. Yeah. What was WrestleMania three like to work in front of 93,000 plus? Oh, wow. Yeah, we got to open the show, too. It was you teamed with Don Morocco Don to wrestle Rocco. Tom Zink and Rick Martell, the yeah, Canada Connection. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was fantastic. 93,000. I think that's the biggest crowd. I don't know now. Until they had it in WrestleMania in Dallas, they had 100,000. But yeah. that took 30 years for yeah. the record to be broken. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, it was something. Was that the biggest payday you ever had? No. No, actually, really? no. Without giving, a, no, without giving a number, what, was the, what, what opponent or match was your biggest payday? Jeez. You know, I... I don't even remember. Maybe WrestleMania one. Did wrestling Hogan make the most money? Like in your opinion, like a lot of wrestlers said, if you worked on the same card as Hogan at that time, yeah. they used to have A towns, B towns. If you were on the same the card C as the house, towns. yeah, and the C towns, right? He used to work three, three shows a night. But, but yeah, you'd rather be on Hogan because he was in the biggest arena. And. Uh, Back then, there was no guaranteed money like it is right. later on. But so. back in that time, uh, we were pretty much all of them were selling out. It was just he was in the biggest place. And then, you know, the B team and the C team, they always, you know, do pretty darn good, too. Because you know, they'd have something like like Roddy and I and Don or something, you know, on one show. And Valentine and Honky Tonk Man on another show. You know, I, I, I mentioned the heels. I don't remember the baby faces. Was it, uh, at that time, you, you guys really protected the business? You didn't travel at all with baby faces. It was heels right. and baby faces, separate locker rooms, well, sure. separate rental cars. It, it was like that, sure. right? It should still be. Do you think that the business can get back? To, I mean, with the way things have been exposed, like even like now we're doing an interview about it now. This would never happen 25, yeah. 30 right. years ago. But right. I think that, that, that the real heat, maybe they have... 
have uh, backed off on a little bit because of the problems we used to have with the fans and, and stuff. And, and uh, I think they don't have that much problem anymore with with the guys getting sliced and you know. Did you ever have to come like across that. that, like going to the ring or coming out getting hit with anything or oh, being yeah. threatened? Like, yeah. can you describe some of the things that might have oh. happened or something that, that that sticks out in your mind? Like that was a scary moment that. Yeah. Like Roddy Piper talks about at one time, uh, him and Ro Ric Flair coming from Puerto Rico back to the dressing room, yeah. and Roddy said he was stabbed a few times. Did you ever have any similar experiences like that? Well, Rochester one night, I remember me and Roddy, and uh, we had worked with Hogan and Snuka. They beat us two straight falls and left us in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just don't do usually the... Baby faces would stay in the ring, so you can get and out. You can get out of there, right. you know. And, it's like they left you to the woods. I don't know if it was just stupidity on their part, or or maybe as a rib. You know, I have no idea. But uh, but I told Roddy, we might as well hit it. He said, "Well, only so many can get in the ring." I said, "Yeah, but Roddy, there's only two of us." I said, look at the cops. The cops were hiding under the bleachers. Wow. And, uh, Rochester, New York's we, finest. We, uh, we started down the aisle, and they had thrown so much stuff that the floor was really wet. And all of a sudden, I just grabbed Roddy, because I saw these three guys coming at us. And I, I grabbed Roddy, and they hit that beer and just slid right in front of us. All three of them just, and boom, we got to the bleachers, got through the door, and we were okay. Oof. But you know what? We lived for that. That was fun. That was exciting. You know, that, that kind of thing. Wouldn't be for me now, but back then it certainly was. We touched on Don Morocco. You teamed with him. You worked with him a lot. Yeah, like sure. even you guys had that split for a little while, but didn't they didn't push it too much? Yeah. I mean, but uh, what was Don Morocco like to work with? And Mr. Fuji in its own right, because oh, he was, was your manager as well. Yeah, Don was was a great performer. He was great out there. He, he was very, very calm and laid back. To, like you, sure, like you are in sure, some ways. Sure. Yeah. And then Fuji, you know, Fuji was always fun. You seem like a guy that doesn't get angry a lot. Does anything ever get you angry, or at that time ever got you to the point like <laughs> don't oh, mess with? Not, not too much. You know, if I ever got upset, somebody had they'll know it. Had gone, gone yeah. a little bit too far. Because usually, you know, the thing that yeah. I just I didn't let too much bother. Me. A lot of personalities back there. In 1989, you made. Uh, you tried to make a comeback with WWF. You lost to Ted DiBiase at some house shows in Springfield. And uh, what what happened there? Like when you tried to come back, like did they tell you it was time, or how, how did you leave yeah, WWF? I, I don't remember. I don't remember. I think I wasn't supposed to go to the bars, and I went to the bar one night. And that was it. Something oh, like okay. At that time, after you left in WWF, you went to WCW for a little while. What were the differences, or oh, how was God. it? <laughs> it uh, so unprofessional. You know, right back to the clicks and everything. It was just so unprofessional. And it didn't matter how good you were. What happened if you weren't in a click? You weren't going anywhere. When you mean so click, I didn't stay you, with them long. you touched on that click. I, this yeah. is interesting. When you mean click, do you mean? Well, the Booker and his boys, or yeah, you mean? Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the Booker would go from town to town. They book who they wanted. They put them in positions to succeed, and you felt that other guys were left to starve per se, or not, well, not get starve, the push, or get yeah, the push yeah, that they yeah. deserve, or you know, try to. You were just wasting your time. Okay. It's like you know, paddling upstream. You know, you ain't going anywhere, and that you know is just not fun. So I didn't stay there. What was it like? Or, you worked in New Zealand a little bit as well? I think I was over there once or twice with Mark Lewin. I, I think I was in Australia probably the same times I went to New Zealand. Maybe I was in Australia three times. Went to Japan a lot. What was that like? What's Japan like? Oh, I like? love Japan. I love the food over there, so <laughs> it, you know, it's easy for me. Are you a sushi lover? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. We might go after that. I, I like sushi too. Yeah. Everybody knows I like sushi. <laughs> Let me ask you something. You um, recently, and this was this might have been uh, up your alley. I mean, this happened in St. Louis. Jinder Mahal wrestling your son Randy, right. main eventing the Money in the Bank pay per view a couple. I think it was like a year or two ago. Yeah. Um, what was that like to be involved in that, especially in in St. Louis? Oh, it was fun. You know, go down there. I enjoyed you know being down there. We got to sit at ringside. I think so. You know, yeah, with nice. Flair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the cast. I always wanted to ask you about the cast. We yeah. touched about it in the car. I wanted to ask you. Yeah. This, this let's try to clear up the rumors. Were you really hurt? What? How? How did? Of course. Okay. How long did it take to to really heal that that cast? Because you had it on for a while, and I mean even for storyline. But its truth is that you were really hurt, and I, I think it took a while until after you retired that it actually finally healed. Is that true? It still hurts. Wow. Yeah. It's been years. And it's, it's still bothering. I still see the. Uh, it's. It, I could see the. I don't know yeah. if that's for, yeah. That scar right there? The scar, yeah. Yeah. What, but anyway, it's, How did it's, that injury occur? Well, I threw Snook into the turnbuckle and he moved when I come with a forearm and I went between the ropes and hit the steel pole. And then uh, a little bit later, I, uh, I forget exactly who was where, but but Snooker went with one of them chops, and I went to block it, and he, he hit the same spot, and, and that, that did it in. How honored are you that the cast is still in infamy, that it was part of the first WrestleMania? It was actually the finish to WrestleMania 1, <laughs> when you accidentally hit Paul Orndorff and caused the whole thing to end. I mean, yeah. what was that like for you? Uh, hitting Paul, that was fun. Or just like that, the, <laughs> fact that, the fact that your cast was the reason of the finish of the very <laughs> first WrestleMania. In Madison Square Garden. You know, that's pretty cool. I've never really thought of it like that. But, but you're right. WrestleMania won. The champ. <laughs> <laughs> Riding with Roddy, you mentioned, uh, really probably wasn't like a dull moment at all. Never a dull moment. Who was the one that drove more? Who, who you know? Oh, I always drove. And I why, why is that? Was Roddy... Uh, no, no, Kick no, back. I just always drove. <laughs> I'm just messing. I love Kitty. Kitty, his wife, um, I got to be close with Roddy right before he passed. You know, it, it hit all of us. Like, I think you told me you talked to him days before it happened. Yeah, just, just days before. He had uh, uh, just brought her down to Los Angeles. I don't think she'd been down there with him too long when, when that happened. So, yeah, what a shock. Yeah. Uh, uh, like I said, I had talked to him not even a week before, I don't think. And, and he, uh, I, I was so upbeat and everything. I hadn't heard him that, uh, that upbeat in, in quite some time. Yeah. But he was really, uh, really excited about her coming down. And, and the stuff that he had going down there was starting to click. Uh, the podcast and all that stuff, yeah. and and then I think he was getting a role here and there and, and some stuff. So he was was really happy, and she had always stayed in Oregon. And she had just come down. I guess the kids were old enough now to to uh, handle everything up north. So so she had come down, and uh, uh, he was was really uh, really sounded like he was in a great place. Uh, Randy, everybody knows, you know, professional wrestler extraordinary. Everybody knows, but you actually have another son, and you you, yeah, you touched yeah. on it that he's moving to New York City, stand-up right. comedian. Um, I can see the glee on your face, like he's the smile, like the, being a proud dad. Like, what kind of like where could people see your son? Is there any links? Is there any you know if, for people that are curious as to watch him? Well, you know what? If you get on the internet and, and look under Nathan Orton, I'm pretty sure that some of his stuff will come up. But but I've still got a flip phone, and, I'm, <laughs> and I don't have a computer. Good for you. You know you don't really need it. it just... My wife has a computer. I don't have a computer. I have no idea how to get on any of that stuff or do any of that thing. You know, I see these people with all these phones, and 
My wife's got one. She's doing, you know, I do stuff. I'm not interested. <laughs> I, even when I text you, you just, I'm sending you a long text about your flight and everything. You're just like, thanks. <laughs> it's very old school. And I, I respect that a lot. Like, yeah. the different time, different, it's just yeah. very how, how it was, really. Yeah, I, it's just, still, I just haven't kept up. And, and, uh, you don't have any social media pages at all? No. No, if you see any, I've heard people tell so me. So that's why I'm it. bringing that up because if any anybody has any Bob Orton uh, Jr. Uh, social media, yeah, it's, it's a phony. Not, it's not me. The man is telling you it's not him. So you, you don't have any social media whatsoever. You don't have nobody that runs accounts for you. Nothing. Oh no, no. There you go. I wouldn't even know how to begin. <laughs> like I say, I'm, I'm just not interested. I've, I've got the little things. I, do. I go to the gym every morning. I, I come home, I do yard work, you know, whatever I want to do around the house, and, and then I pretty much just lay back. May I, let me read something. This is, I want to know if this is true or not. Okay. This is from Wikipedia, so everybody knows Wikipedia, it's, it's true, right? I don't know. Maybe around 19... Wikipedia. Yeah, Wikipedia, <laughs> Wikipedia is known to have some discrepancies, and this is why I'm going to read this and see if this is true or not. And if it's not true, they should take this down. Okay. Around 1986... Bob Orton was involved in an incident in Fresno, California, where the Fresno... Oh, true. Before I even read it. <laughs> you didn't even read the rest. They could have said you murdered three people. Nobody knows. No, it no, says no. here that the Fresno Police Department were called for an incident involving Orton and Roddy Piper in a hotel. Orton would end up naked and drunk on the roof of the hotel and would be I was shot... drunk first. You were drunk first. Drunk and naked... On the roof of the hotel, no. and you were shot three times with police tasers. And I, I pulled them out and threw them back at him. Now, what actually happened, I had gone to bed. Now, I'm in bed, sleeping, and my phone rings. And I pick up the phone, and somebody says, They got your two buddies down here. They're getting ready to take them to jail. They want you to come bail them out. And so I'm thinking, ah, this, I'll bet this is a gosh damn rip. So I was on about the third floor of one of them uh, uh, holodunk, you know, where they got the the uh, thing that, you know, you can the look lobby? over the rail and, and see the, balcony? the lobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the rooms are around. From the balcony in your room? Up. Yeah. Okay. So I'm on the third floor, I think. And I'm thinking it's a rib. And then I thought, well, let me take a look. So it's like 3 o'clock in the morning. And I look out, and there ain't nobody around. So I got the door in one hand, and I'm looking. Just get where I can see over the railing, and I hear click. Oh, shit. I just locked myself out of my room. And I looked down there, and sure enough, there was uh, Roddy and Don. Police had Roddy handcuffed. Didn't have Don handcuffed because Don's wrists were too big. Handcuffs won't fit. So I yelled down, hey, I just locked myself out of the room. Could someone come up and let me oh in? Well, the guy come up with a key, but, but about uh, four or five cops came with him. I, you know why? Who the fuck knows? Maybe because you were but naked. I, well, they didn't know that. Oh, they didn't know that because yet. Because the rail, they could ah, okay. only see there, and it was, you know, a solid rail. Why were the police there in the first place? Because it seemed like it was bad timing that at the same time, coincidentally, well, you're locked out. Roddy and Don had done something. Okay. I don't even know what. I still don't know what. Not even to this day. And I saw Morocco last year, and I didn't ask him. I've always wondered what the hell they were doing. I'll ask him next time. But anyway, I just tucked my dick between my legs. <laughs> And they come up, and the guy opened the door. So I went in the room, and the cops started following me in my room. I said, you guys can't come in here. I said, I'll be right out. Let me put my pants on. So I, I put my pants on. I'm standing up to pull them up, and I see this fucking guy. Boom, boom, boom. I thought, this son of a bitch just shot me. And then I remembered seeing these little tracers. And I looked down, oh. and I had three things in my The taser, the, the water. And I just grabbed them and jerked them out. 
and threw him at that prick, and I said, I'm going to kill you, you motherfucker. And I started at him, and the cops got him out of there. And then they, Bob, Bob, now calm down, calm down. And by then, you know, I'm, okay, fine, I'll calm down. And then I, uh, what the hell? Did I know? Oh, they, they, uh, they didn't take Roddy and, and Don to jail because they figured they were in some pretty bad shit shooting me three times right. in my hotel room. So they let Don and Roddy go. And uh, went back up and went to bed. You didn't even get medical attention. You just went right back to bed. No, they, no, no, now that you say that, the, the, one of them cops made me go to the, I might have been a hospital or whatever, and they dabbed mercuricum on it and he took wow. me back to the hotel. But, you know, I, I kept telling I've got mercuricum and alcohol in my room. I, I don't need to go. But maybe they, maybe they do things with them things. You know, who knows what they do with them. Yeah. A lot of them cops are good guys. Some of them are sick. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what they did with them? <laughs> Let's play a word association to close us out. I'll name some guys, especially from that era in the 80s, early 90s that you worked with. And any th thought or sentence, story comes to mind, you could just go right with it. Oh, Roddy Piper. Oh, just a great guy. Never a dull moment. A lot of fun to be around, and uh, a hell of a performer, and one of the best interviewers in the business ever. And it was an honor to be uh, his partner and his bodyguard. How much heat did you guys get when you took, um, what was his name, the little, the little midget? midget? When you took it and started shaving his head on pipe, you were holding him and he's, his feet are dangling. Yeah. If anybody who goes to WWE Network and could go back, and that's the beauty of WWE Network, you go back and watch, but you were holding this poor little guy, his feet are dangling, and Piper's screaming in his face and he's shaving him, and you're just laughing the whole way holding it. Yeah, yeah. Boy, we had some heat. God, we had some heat. That's the greatest feeling in the world, is to have that kind of heat. I loved it. I thrived on it. And a lot of people would, would, would like to... Uh, to hear the people cheer for them and scream their name. Or buy their shirts and merchandise, but you didn't shy away from the heat the way a lot of current performers now. Wanted they want to be loved. Yeah. Yeah, that, I got off on that. Yeah, come on, you sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we see with Randy. I mean, Randy's always been a more natural heel. I mean, he just loves to play off of that, you know, especially like Cho. I've seen him have children tears down their face. One time, Madison Square Garden, I was in the front, and I saw him wrestle Jeff Hardy at the Royal Rumble. I think it was 2008. And I remember after the match, he just held up the, his world title. The kid was draped with Jeff Hardy gear, and he, the kid was just soaking and put his face down. <laughs> and Randy was just enjoying and, and the fact that... And it wasn't even on TV. This was something when the lights were... The, the arena was dark, and they were playing a promo of something else, video package. And just for that one moment, just for him to really get somebody upset, just for those few people in the, in the front. He, he never turned it off, like if you know what I mean, like until he got to the, like you see other performers, they turn it off when, or turn it on, turn it off when the camera's not there. But even if there was a couple of those people, he still He's a was in there. Yeah. So when you said that right now, that just triggered a memory of me. When I, I remember him doing that, it was just, you know, like father, like son, you don't shy away from that heat. Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, I didn't, didn't mean for him to be so honorary, but, <laughs> but I'm glad he turned out that way. <laughs> How about Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff? Oh, God, Paul, what a great guy. What an athlete. Gee, my Italy. Uh He was uh, Tampa University. He, he played ball for him down there, one of the best in the country. He played for the Saints, I think it was the Saints. Uh, could have made it in, in a pro football field. You know, just a fantastic athlete and a great professional uh, uh, wrestler. How about Hillbilly Jim? Oh, was one of the best. Jim, you know, for a guy with a gimmick, he, he tried real, real hard. And he was very open to anything he wanted to do. He listened. Uh, and I think he did very well for the Hillbilly Jim gimmick. You know, 
you know, he was was uh, good. They used him the exact way that you should use a guy like that. And he's actually uh, yeah. here this week, and he'll be there tomorrow at the convention. So, oh, okay, good sale. Cool, cool. How about the junkyard dog? Oh God, what a great guy, and fun to work with. I I used to to work with him a lot in uh, New Orleans when I was down there with with. Uh, Dog and I worked a lot together. He'd, uh, I'd be working on him. He beat the shit out of him, and then people would start that that chant. Who would that? Who would that? Who would have beat that dog? Who'd that say they're gonna beat that dog? And he'd start getting up, and he'd say he'd have goosebumps. Yeah, I guess. And when he got the goosebumps, he'd knock the shit out of him. <laughs> and I'd say, now Sylvester, calm down, Sylvester. Take it easy, Sylvester. He just laughed. <laughs> I was at a. I no, I, I really had a lot of time for dog. God bless him. About 15 years ago, I remember you were on a panel. I was there with uh, Captain Lou Albano. No, sorry, not. He was in the first panel, but it was. This was at a fan slam. Tommy Fierro's fan slam. Now he's doing '80s wrestling con. One of the things that somebody asked you was. What were um, what was the best advice you ever gave or somebody given to you? And I'm just paraphrasing, but you said, um, if you don't you don't feel it, you don't see it, and if I ever felt it, I'll knock the shit out of you. You said something of that nature. Yeah, my dad always said that they can only see it, they can't feel it, and that's true. Yeah, that's where I, I was going to ask you where'd you get that from, but it was from yeah, your it was from your dad. dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can only see it, they can't feel it. How about Captain Lou Albano? Oh, gosh. Is it true he got fired every other week by Vince? I, you know, I, I'm sure he did. <laughs> <laughs> he would fire him and rehire him? Like, is it like a, the next week? <laughs> but, uh, great manager. We always talked about the talent. We never touched on road agents. Well, who were some of the, your favorite road agents or uh, some that helped you in your, in your career, especially in WWE? I'm trying to think who was... Rene Goulet, I know, uh, Chief J. Strongbow, Strongbow, yeah. George yeah. Steele was our agent George, later. George, sure, sure, um, sure. No, yeah. they were all, all great guys, easy to get along with. And they just, uh, they wanted you to go out there and uh, work hard and have a good match. How hands-on was Vince McMahon in, the, in that time, as, a, as opposed to now? Obviously, he's a lot older. He's got writers. He's got the the company's gone public yeah, since. Yeah, don't let him fool you with all the writers and all that. So he's still more hands-on, right? right? Well, I know he is with the main event guys. I'm sure with Randy and all other guys. But a lot, if you weren't John Cena or Randy Orton or Triple H or a couple of guys like that, you didn't really. A lot of guys are actually intimidated by him, even till till today, obviously. But. Yeah. Well, he had a great mind for the business. There's no doubt about that. And he had uh, the talent. There was at one time they had all the guys up here. You know? uh, if he was any good anywhere you were here. Is there anybody that you wish you have gotten to work with that you never got a chance to? In WWE or no, wherever? No, no, I, I can't. can't think anybody off the top of my head. I think I work with about everybody. How, let's continue. How about the British Bulldogs? Yeah, Don and I worked with them, them a few times. What were they like? Are they uh, easy? Were you there when the fight between Dynamite Kid and Jacques Rougeau, when he hit him with the with the quarters or he knocked his teeth out? No. no well, that must, might have been a little after, probably. Like yeah. It was in 87, about 87, 88, about. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I wasn't there. It seemed about, like I might have heard something about it, but I, I wouldn't. How about Bobby Heenan? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bobby was a great manager and just a lot of fun. He was the same way he was. He was Simon. He was the same way in the car. What about Gorilla Monsoon? No different. Just laid back, easy going, and uh, fun to work for. Good ideas. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I'm good on the mic. Yeah. How about? Was there anybody that you did not enjoy too much, or that you weren't as close with, or something that irked you, or you didn't like? It, it could have not even just been a personal thing. Maybe just didn't gel with them in the ring and didn't have a great match, you would think. Was there anybody at that time? You know, not really. When I had guys like that, and I don't even remember them, I just ground them. And uh, 
and I'm sure they took care of working with with me by by going back and saying that th that they didn't want to work with me anymore, which was fine with me. That's probably what I because you're a little snug. Is that what it was? Or yeah, when I had guys that that I didn't didn't uh, I don't know exactly how to say. It. When I had guys who thought they were better than they were and took liberties with your body. You know, once a guy hurt me, you know, a little bit, that was it. He got no more. And, uh, simple as that. How about Hulk Hogan? Oh, shit. You were inducted with him in the same class in 2005. Hogan was, uh, well, you know, he's probably still got every record there is to have. But, uh, he, uh, I don't know if I told uh, uh, during this promo or not how we met. Oh, about yeah, you mentioned about uh, how he tapped you and you thought, and he, he you introduced him to Hiro Matsuda. Well, I sent him down. Right, you sent him down there, yeah. Hero, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if we had done. This yeah, we did. On this we touched on that. We did that in the car. Both, yeah, we did. We talked okay. about it. Um, what did you think of uh, like actually kept this in great shape, and I appreciate you signing it for me. Yeah. This is the. I don't know if you see. This is the LJN in the package. This is your first action figure. When they came out with this, um, this is one of the earlier series. I believe it says 1985. That's the original card on it. Wow. I mean, just look. It even has the hat. I mean, everything. When they came out with this, a lot of guys, did they groan or they looked at it as an opportunity to make more money? What, what was, in your estimation, what, what the boys thought? And you personally? Oh, I just thought it was pretty cool. You know, yeah. I got a doll in the, the toy shops now. Yeah. <laughs> and this one. The you know, and they still keep up, like even till now. They, they these. This is the newest one of yours, Mattel. This is copyrighted from 2017. So I mean, they still wow. look and the same series: Rick Rude, Sergeant Slaughter, Ted DiBiase. Yeah. I mean, what's it like to walk? You can I mean you can walk into Walmart right now. Yeah. I mean, at your young age of what, 42. And see, <laughs> and see something like this, and say, "Oh my goodness!" Yeah, I'm good being, you know. <laughs> when you see something like this now, I mean, your grandkids could go in and and oh, buy this yeah. off the shelf. This, how does that make you feel? Oh, well, you know, just just wow. You know, it's hard to to believe, I guess. You know that I've got a doll in me in a, a toy store, especially in the 30 years after I used to work. Yeah. So. I don't think you've ever touched on this, but like without giving specific numbers, because I know it's kind of tacky to talk about figures and numbers. But how how well, or if not, were you paid for the LJN figure? Oh, I got checks, and, and I was happy with them. Shit, I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> they got taken care of, though. Everybody did like yeah, that time. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure everyone is happy with what they got, and I'm sure you know we all should have probably got more. But then we're dealing with Vince, so what, what you gonna do? Right. <laughs> Last one. You just touched on him, Vince McMahon. Mm -hmm. I, he's a great guy to work for. You know, pays good money, uh, first class. Is he intimidating? Oh, sure. And I don't mean like you're scared of him. I mean the fact that, like, yeah, yeah, he's you know, he's gotten thousand dollar haircuts. I've heard he's he <laughs> never like if he sneezes, he's mad at himself. He doesn't like to smoke. He, he keep there's not even a hair out of place. His suits are pristine. So. To see somebody like that, like, does it ever look like, oh, you know, stay clear of Vince? Or he, he oh, made himself approachable. Oh, well, sure. Sure. You can talk to him anytime about anything. The last question I want to ask you is, how do you want to be remembered? I don't want, uh, somebody went out there and worked hard. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and you could join us on GoPro Wrestling on our social media platforms. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Share it. Tell your friends. Like, comment. Tell us what you think about this video. If you don't like it, I'm going to have uh, Miss Thornton here come and hit you with that cast. <laughs> but I appreciate you all watching. And um, for my uh, guest here, thank you so much. The legendary one and only, the ace, Cowboy Bob Orton in our GoPro Wrestling studio. And all the wrestling fans out there, I just want to say thanks. Thank you for having us here. Thank you yeah. so much for your time. Sure, my pleasure. We'll see you next time.